What you making? I'm making some brown rice flour. And what we're doing is we're gonna make some uh, brown rice flour and vermiculite mm -hmm. cakes for growing mushrooms. Awesome. And the reason we're using these for a substrate is, is people will be able to do this without having to use a pressure cooker or they can still use a pressure cooker and it's just an easy method. But it saves them a lot of money to get started. Yes, because they don't need a pressure cooker mm -hmm. with this method. We're gonna use two cups of vermiculite. I see you already have one cup. And I put one already. cup already in. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna use 240 cc's of water. And I'm Just pouring the water it. in. Okay, so you're mixing your water in with the vermiculite. Right, and then I add my uh, brown rice flour after I've mixed up the water with the vermiculite. Okay. Because it just seems to coat it better. And you just mix up the water with your verm real nice, mm -hmm. and you get it moist, and you just mix it around a little bit. And this will make five half pint jars worth of substrate. Okay. So just mixing it up good. And now that I have the vermiculite and the water, pretty well mixed up and, and, and I have a nice moist vermiculite. I'm gonna go ahead and add the one cup of brown rice flour. Okay. So I just spread it around in the bowl. And then we mix that in really good. And what it'll do, Mark, is it'll make it a real light, fluffy substrate and we'll get it mixed in really, really good so that the flour is coating all of the verm. And verm is a nickname for vermiculite. We have our vermiculite and our uh, brown rice flour really well mixed. And it's really fluffy and airy and it, it's got really nice moisture content. You can see that it, it's damp. Mm -hmm. So what we wanna do is start filling our jars. want to pack the substrate into the jar. So just fill it. So just like fill that. it and then you can lightly, very lightly, just place your fingers in there. And the only reason we're doing that is we want to get the substrate off of the side of the lip. And then what we'll do is we'll take a dry towel and we'll go on that inside lip and we'll wipe that inside lip. And what that does, it gets the moisture off the inside of the jar. And a lot of people get contaminations because they don't do this. And when you dry this lip like I'm doing right here with this towel and dry it off and get it, all that moisture off that lip, you got a nice clean, right. So nice. contaminants won't be able to colonize yeah, down they, that Yeah, the later. contaminants won't be able to go down the side of the jar and, and in. So and what so, are you going to top it off with? And so what I'm going to do now, I got some dry verm, mm -hmm. vermiculite. And we're just going to very lightly put it in here. Then you just sort of tap it slightly, not hard. Just so you're just leveling it off. You're not pushing down at all. Right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the jar lid, which has four holes punched in it. So, and the holes are punched in it for your inoculation points. And you're going to put the lid over the top. And I see you use rubber side up. And what you do, you can either use masking tape and put over the holes, or you can use microspore tape like this, mm -hmm. and put that on. The micropore tape is the medical tape. It's a medical tape.
As we watch Jim fill the rest of these jars, note that he puts the substrate in the jars very loose and airy. Then he wipes down the top uh, half inch, one centimeter of the jar in order to clean the substrate off the side of the jar. Then puts the dry vermiculite in, followed by the lid rubber side up. The only purpose for putting it rubber side up is it just makes it easier to get off later. And then you cover the inoculation and gas exchange holes with micropore tape. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put the aluminum foil onto the jars now. I preformed them. Yeah, we can use that same foil over and over yeah, again. Yeah, you can use it over and over again. You got them wrapped, here's your wrapped pan. And, and I, okay. see we, I see we have a layer of jar lids in the I'm bottom. I'm putting jar lids in the bottom, and what that does, it will keep the jars from being on the bottom of the pot. Now on one of the sites that I teach on, a lot of people put um, a dish towel or, 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 or a towel in the bottom and then they'll put water in there and then put their jars on top of the dish towel and uh, it's just not a real good method. Because sometimes if, 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 if you put the jars in the bottom of your pot, it'll crack the bottoms mm -hmm. or else it'll burn the substrate right. in the bottom of the jar. From the intense heat. Yeah, exactly. Of the burner. Right. And I'm gonna put another layer of jar lids in. So we're gonna have our jars actually and our jars two or three be, centimeters off the bottom. They're gonna be it. off the bottom and it, it's also gonna keep them out of the water. Right. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and put some water in. Okay, well I've got a pitcher of water right here. Now how much water are you gonna use? I am gonna just bring it I'm going to put enough water in here so it, it just comes up to the top jar ring. The important thing to remember here is the jars are completely out of the water and that's a really good idea. The steam is going to sterilize them because we'll have a fairly tight fitting lid. So get imaginative, use whatever you have around the house. Uh, we used extra jar lids because most uh, mushroom growers have an abundance of jars anyway. Uh, if you have a vegetable steamer, I've seen people use a layer of rocks, several layers of aluminum foil, just whatever you have, but try to elevate your jars completely out of the water. And that will prevent the water when it boils from splashing up under the foil and then dripping down through your holes and ruining the moisture content of your substrate. We're going to put this kettle on the stove now and uh, turn the stove up on high and bring the water to a full boil. Once it boils, go ahead and reduce the stove setting because otherwise it'll just boil your kettle dry. But you want to reduce the stove setting just to the minimum point that will keep the water boiling and the steam itself is going to sterilize the jars. 